Hey boys and girls, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we've got sort of another unboxing, overview, aesthetic look, however you want to sort of word it. Now, I'm really, really, really restricted with what I can say uh, about these boards and I have said that on all the other videos that we've done from uh, the Gigabyte boards, MSI and so forth. Obviously, when we have a launch, similar to this one here, they are, uh, well there are some conditions into what we can say and what we can't say and we're bound by a non-disclosure agreement so or NDA now what Intel have basically um, told us is that we can't mention anything to do with the chipset and we can't mention anything to do with the processor and obviously definitely 100% not um, anything about performance and benchmarks so instead what this video is going to be uh, about the Intel uh, DZ87 KLT 75K is that it's going to be more of a sort of you know looking at the box unboxing aesthetic sort of view of everything and so forth so that's yeah that's pretty much how we're going to sort of play this video and uh, hopefully you know you guys enjoy it so first thing I want to talk about is obviously the box but before I do that, I want to mention that whenever Intel release a new chipset, which is generally when they release a new processor, as we know, there's a new chipset coming and a new processor coming. I can't mention the names of them or the code name or anything like that. But when they do, they always release sort of their own reference board. Now, this isn't generally something that you'll find in mass production in terms of the retail market because we have the likes of Gigabyte, Azus, MSI, ASRock and so forth for that. Now, what this sort of does is it gives all of the motherboard partners like Azus, MSI, Gigabyte and ASRock, uh, among others, it does give them sort of a, an idea as to how to design their board. And it's basically a design layout, a reference layout for them. But you will find that system integrators are able to use this board and you will find a few sort of, you know, popping up in the retail channel. And we've seen that sort of, you know, in the past couple of launches, Z77, uh, they had one there. The, I think it was the DZ77GA70K. Um, but yeah, this is the newest one. So this is the DZ87KLT75K, optimized for Intel K-series processors. Just like we've seen with Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge with the 2700K, 3700K and you know, so forth. So yeah, this is pretty much where we are. So I'm not gonna sort of talk through too much of the features purely because I can't. But yeah, turning it over is where we get a first view of the board. And you can see that there are a lot of features here. Uh, including uh, obviously you know some Intel ones, Intel Rapid Storage Technology. Uh, we've got plenty of SATA 6 gig per second ports, PCI Express uh, 3.0 x16 slots, and much more. Uh, as well as you know a Bluetooth Wi-Fi module as well. Nice little BIOS in there as well, Thunderbolt technology, and so forth. So let's get this unboxed and see exactly what comes included. Now the motherboard comes in the top, but you know, we put that out of the way for the minute and start with the accessories. So we've got a uh, rear I.O. panel. Uh, on here straight away you can see plenty of USB ports, HDMI, audio, Thunderbolt, uh, you know, back to BIOS button. That's all I can say about that. B2B means back to BIOS, not business to business. Um, so yeah, rear I.O. Taking this bit out, you can see that we've got a integration guide which basically just tells you how to install a processor, how to install a heatsink, connecting the chassis front panel cables. Um, yeah, so basically every sort of part of the system, you know, installing a graphics card, uh, power supplies, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth module, gives you a view of the board. So yeah, really, really sort of simple, but to the point. Now, there isn't a user guide with our one, but there should be. But because ours is obviously a review sample, there's no user guide in here, no driver installation disc or anything like that. But you will get one if you did buy this retail. We have the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. Now, this looks really, really simple. Uh, it has a cable. This cable actually, uh, which plugs into here and then plugs into the motherboard onto a USB header, and uh, yeah, just basically sits on your desk, sort of nice and comfortably, and uh, and out the way, or on top of the computer, or wherever you want to, yeah, put it. So yeah, we've got that, and then yeah, obviously the cable as well. We've got a single, uh, very very small SLI bridge, NVIDIA SLI. So straight away we know this board is going to support multi GPU technology, and we get an Intel branded uh, mouse pad with the skull that they've used for quite some time on there as well. The only problem with that is it's really really flimsy. Um, yeah, it comes in this sort of protective bag just to keep it nice and clean. But yeah, it's not the greatest mouse pad on the market. And I don't know, maybe until we've got a surplus of them and they can't really shift them and get rid of them. But I don't know, I, I just don't think it's really needed with a motherboard like that. It's not exactly a gaming motherboard or anything like that, but I guess it's a, a bit of a novel idea. Now, underneath all this protective material, we find 
the motherboard itself in its anti-static bag. And there you go. We can get a first view of the Intel DZ87KLT75K. Although on here they're missing the T. I'm not quite sure why. They've just called it the KL. Um, but yeah, we'll look into that in a little bit more detail. Now, straight away, just like all the other boards that we've seen recently, uh, you will notice that there's a, a very distinct color scheme going on. Everyone's gone and moved over to sort of the black PCBs. Intel have sort of used black PCBs for quite a while, but uh, yeah, it's really refreshing to see everyone sort of making that jump. Now, color scheme wise, this is pretty much what we're used to. We've got the black and the blue uh, color scheme, obviously blue Intel colors. Lots of Intel branding on here with the colors, the logos and so forth. Now, in terms of form factor, it's ATX. And in terms of cooling, you can see that we've got a very large um, heatsink passive design cooler up here with a model number on there and the nice big shiny skull. And that is obviously helping to cool the phase uh, around the CPU. We've also got this smaller one here uh, because we have got some phases up here as well. In terms of uh, power delivery, uh, we have got um, an 8-pin power connector just up here. We've got a couple of fan headers sort of scouted around here. We've got a 4-pin up here. Now, this little connector, you're probably all wondering what the hell it is, and we was to start with because it's a bit of a specialist feature. It's called an EDP3, um, I think it's called JTAG connector. Now, what that actually is, is uh, for debugging. So anyone who's doing sort of troubleshooting, it's a debug LED, sort of, in a way. Even though down on the bottom of the board, just down here, we have got debug LEDs, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. So around the CPU socket, you can see that there's plenty of room uh, for larger air coolers, but with the majority of people moving over to all-in-one uh, water cooling blocks, you're not going to have any problem with sort of you know obstruction or anything like that with the capacitors. Memory-wise, we've got four DIMM slots, some blue, some black, so obviously dual channel. I'm guessing once again this is uh, going to be one of these boards that accepts up to 32 gig, but I can't really mention what speeds because that's all down to Intel certification and what the onboard memory controller under here will obviously be able to handle. More CPU fan headers, so uh, uh, sorry, system fan headers, so we've got some here, some here. In terms of overclocking, we've got a power button, reset switch, we've got a integrated onboard uh, chassis speaker, we've got our ATX 24 pin power connector, just with the typical blue colouring, we've got USB 3.0. Now I'm really interested what this little chip is under here, uh, I saw this when I first got this out um, before you know making this video, but yeah it's got this tiny little chip under there, but it would be really interesting to sort of look into you know what some of these new features are, um, you know features that we as reviewers and as the general public maybe haven't seen before. In terms of other things that we've got going on down here, we've got clear CMOS, a couple of other sort of headers uh, and so forth. We have plenty of SATA ports, so we've got two, four, six, eight. Now you can see that two are grey and six are blue. I'm not saying that that denotes anything different, and if, you know these may be off one controller, these may be off another, or there may be different speeds. I really can't mention you know what the uh, Intel chipset handles in terms of uh, SATA speeds or anything like that. We've got some more sort of uh, headers down here as well. Uh, but before we sort of move down to the front panel connectors, you can see that we've got another heatsink up here. Intel branded with a blue colouring, very low profile, so it's not going to have any uh, you know, obstruction with uh, larger graphics cards that obviously come through the PCI Express lanes and sort of overhang over here. It's going to, yeah, there's not going to be any problems with that at all. So front panel, uh, front panel connectors, you can see that uh, we've got sort of you know quite a very different amount so we have got our front panel which is going to be LEDs your switches um, all that sort of usual stuff we've got two debug uh, display LEDs not quite sure why they need two maybe ones for temperatures maybe ones for you know just normal but we have seen it on boards where they've only had one and once the system's booted then it gives you the temperatures so it may be a little bit confusing but when we come to the to actually do the review we'll be able to comment on that a little bit more once we've actually used it we've got plenty of USB 2.0 so we've got one here one here, we've got one here, we've got some uh, LEDs down here uh, as well, so with these ones these are all sort of your uh, your status LEDs, so it will tell you when uh, the CPU has been initialised, when the video has been initialised, the hard drive, when the operating system starts, so yeah, if there's any troubleshooting needed apart from using the speaker and if there's any beeps or anything, this is obviously going to help you as well. And before I carry on there are some more LEDs just up here. So uh, yeah, these LEDs are all about the uh, about the phase um, sort of. So when uh, obviously the CPU phases are starting to boot up and power up, yeah, these are going to tell you you know one to eight as to uh, how they're doing. 
as we move back to the um, sort of front panel connectors, you can see that we've got a SP diff for your audio. We've got uh, some more system fan headers. We've got uh, this one is yeah Firewire by the looks of it. So yeah, we've got FB1394. So this is your Firewire header, and then we've got our front panel audio, uh, which is obviously um, if you've got microphone headphone jacks, this is a uh, where the money is. In terms of expansion slots, we have got quite a lot. So we've got a PCI Express X1 slot here, X16, X1, X1, X16, legacy PCI, and another X16. Now, this is where it gets interesting because I can't mention what the chipset allows you to do in terms of bandwidths and uh, things like that. Obviously, you can see that it supports Crossfire um, or SLI. And we can see, and this is just from a visual point of view, a visual standpoint, this X16 slot is wired X16. Okay, so the pins go all the way to the end. And if we count the little transistors just up here, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. From a visual standpoint, that is what you can see. The next one down, X16, and if we look, yep, the pins go all the way to the end. And if we have a look, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Just from a visual standpoint, I'm not mentioning that, you know, these are natively x16 that's all i'm saying and then we've got this one down here uh, but yeah i do want to mention even though it's x16 there it does say pco express x8 secondary so yeah that's a bit of a one to mess with your mind there um yeah this one down here x16 it's wired all the way to the end for x16 but if we look we've got two four six eight though it does mention that it's pco express x4 third so yeah there you go i'm not mentioning what the chipset does in terms of um you know bandwidth but you can see that we have a PLX chip a lot of speculation has gone around about this board on forums and whether it has got a PLX chip whether that's going to open up the bandwidth so we've got x16 x16 x8 or so forth it really depends on what configuration you're going to run and I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to confirm or deny what this can do um, but yeah legacy PCI I'm, I'm still a bit sort of shocked to to see that on here i think you know we're, we're past the point where legacy pci is is no longer needed but clearly intel think it is on on a board like this but we have seen others uh, other boards based around this you know the the g1 sniper series and uh, msi and so forth and yeah some of them haven't got pci some of them have uh, so really it's sort of personal preference with uh, with the motherboard manufacturer i guess now in terms of expansion we also have got this we've got a mini uh, pci express which also obviously um, doubles up and you can use it as a uh, msata and obviously this board has got uh, intel smart response technology so you can do ssd caching as well so yeah you've got the little screw point here and here just take that off put it down screw it down and so forth other than that, we've got some more fan headers just up here. So we've got rear fan one and two. Now, you will notice that a lot of these fan headers, generally all of them, are four pin, which is going to be fantastic for those wishing to uh, obviously install PWM based fans and let the, uh, the system sort of do the work for you. So yeah, that gives you a bit of an insight into the cooling properties on this board. And uh, it's not just this one, it's other brand boards uh, based around this chipset that really are sort of focusing on the four pin. Uh, but there is some interesting ones with uh, with other brands where um, they've only got three pin, but they do allow for PWM. That's all I'm saying on that for now. Now, moving to the rear I/O, uh, this is something that really sort of interests me because I'm I'm a sucker for USBs purely because I have a USB keyboard, mouse, the camera, the camcorder, you know, hubs and things like that. Yeah, I use so much USB; it's unbelievable. So it's really nice to see a lot. Now, straight away you can see that we've got a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port, two USB 2.0 um, high speed. So with these you're going to be able to charge your mobile phone, you're going to be able to um, use devices such as external hard drives that may necessarily need an extra little bit of juice, but instead of plugging them in, you can plug them just straight into here. Now that yeah, obviously allows you to, uh, to use devices like that without having to plug them into the mains. We've got this button here, which generally would be a sort of CMOS button, but yeah, it's called a B2B or back to BIOS. That's all I can really comment and say on that. From an aesthetics point of view, it's called a back to BIOS button. USB 3.0, you can see that we've got two, four, six. We've got uh, Firewire. Why we've got Firewire, I don't know. It's such a redundant feature now in my eyes. I may be wrong, there may be people out there who still use it. If you are one of those people, um, please comment below and tell me that you still use it, because otherwise I just think it's a completely wasted feature. You can see that we've got um, dual gigabit LAN. Now these are um, 
actually I can't really mention what, what controller they use but yeah they're, they're Intel gigabit LAN that's all I'm going to say um, that's all I can really say but it's nice to see obviously two on there um, hopefully you know you can uh, you can double these up and uh, and use uh, some of the features that we've seen on existing Intel boards like the Z77 uh, which you could use sort of both concurrently uh, which obviously helped with uh, with bandwidth issues when it comes to you know network traffic and so forth we've got HDMI um, port just here sort of vertically we've got our audio so we've got SP diff we've got our usual sort of line out um, line in mic center sub and so forth over here and then just tucked down here you can just see it the itty bitty tiny whiny Thunderbolt port and that my friends is pretty much it for this board I wish I could tell you more, and I've said that on every single one of these videos, and I think we're on like video number five now. I haven't actually published any at the time I'm recording this. We've got so much work to do in terms of publishing these, these videos that we're doing for these boards. So we've got MSI, we've got Zeus, we've got Gigabyte, we've got this one. There's so much to do, and there's so much that I wish I could say, but I really, really can't, and it frustrates me. But when it comes to the NDA lifting, which is soon, that's all I can really say about that is soon, you will see all the benchmark performance figures on this board and all the other boards. And uh, yeah, I'd love to say you're gonna be pleasantly surprised, but I don't even think I can say that. I can't even give any tiny little ounce of how the performance is um, from what we've seen so far. But there you go. Hopefully this has given you a sort of overview, aesthetics point of view on the, uh, on the Intel DZ87KLT75K. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel where we will have a lot more videos based around this upcoming chipset, upcoming range of motherboards, upcoming range of processors that I can't tell you what they're called. But yeah, until next time, hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, on the Intel DZ87KLT75K. And uh, thank you very much. See you later.